So I'm going to go into reports. And I'm going to search for custom summary report. So I'm going to click on that. Okay. And I'm going to click on customize. And I can choose what goes into my rows and what goes into my columns. But for some reason, I don't understand. Okay, there, there it is. So I can go what goes into my columns and what goes into my rows. So I can pick that. Um, there it is. Okay. So I got my rows and my columns. So if I want to pick rows, I can pick, let's say, uh, locations. And under columns, I can pick customers. Click on run report. Let's do, let's do this year. To all dates run report now I, I currently don't have a location set up but the minute i start adding locations this report will start taking shape so let's do that real quick let me duplicate this tab and let me go into all of my invoices and i'm going to go ahead and add locations so let's make this one miami office And let's make this other one West Palm Beach office. Let's make this one Miami office. We'll make this one West Palm Beach office. And I think that's all of them. We'll see. So let me click on run. Uh, there are two that are missing. So let's change the two that we're missing. Okay, I can do deposits of the Miami office there and then we got this one we'll make this one West Palm Beach office Miami office okay so let's go back into the report custom summary report there you go that's pretty cool so I got my I basically have my locations as a row, and then I have my customers as a column. You can flip it too, so I can do locations in the top, and then where's my customers? Ah, why are customers not in rows? Oh, it's the first one, there you go, run. So I can do customers and then locations, or I can do, let's say for example, products and services by location, that's pretty cool too. Okay, um, looks like some of these don't have products and services. I guess that's fine. And let's do customize, filter, and let's only show uh, income, just sales. So let's go to all. All income. Where are you, all income? All income. Run. So it doesn't show any of my expenses. Okay, so this one's missing. Uh, the item because it's a, that's a deposit and that's that's that makes total sense right because you, we use a deposit instead of using an invoice that we're supposed to um, and then let's do my products and services run report and there should be none because I, I don't think I use any products and services oh yeah I did I did so let's oh, go to one of these products and services and let's pick a different one let's do an item let's do ours Okay, so, so there you go. So we see uh, products and services as my, as my rows, and then I see locations as my columns. I can flip it the other way too. I could do products and services in the top, and then uh, locations in the, in the bottom. Look at that. So again, very nice QuickBooks. I've, you know, they've done, this is really, really great. The one thing which would be my, my biggest feedback for them would be that, um, that I, that you add custom fields to this. If they were able to add custom fields to this, they would hit such a huge home run. I think that's what's missing from uh, from here. Um, although I mean, there's there's a lot of options here. There's a, there's a time frame. It's only available in the columns. So days, weeks, months, and quarters and years only in the columns. Not available on the rows. But after that, they're all the same. Customers, vendors, employees, locations, classes. Products and services, income accounts, balance sheet accounts, they're both available 
in both. But if they were able to add custom fields here, man, that would be really, really killer. That's not available yet. So if I wanted to do, let's say expenses by vendor, by location, then I would do something like this. Uh, instead of picking all income accounts, I would pick all expense accounts, which by the way, doesn't include cost of goods sold. I, it would have to be separate. So that's, that's one my pet peeve about. My pet peeve about this is that there isn't one that combines cost of goods sold and expenses. It's only either expenses or cost of goods sold. A different story, but I'll get off my soapbox. And then we'll do uh, locations here and then we'll do uh, vendors in the top. Let's click on run. And then I'm gonna go ahead and create some expenses. So let's do, let's go for vendor one. Let's do $2,500. Location Miami office, good. Let's go to vendor two. Let's pick another expense category. Let's make this $12,000. Save a new. And let's go to vendor three, West Palm Beach office. Let's do disposal fees, $4,000, save and new. Let's do another vendor. Let's do, let's do our insurance and let's make this $2,600, Miami office, save and close. All right, cool. So let's go back in here, let's click on run report. And there it is. There's my, my locations and all my vendors. I can also do it the other way. Bring locations in the top and bring vendors over here. I can also do something I really like, I really, really like, and this is gonna be really useful for, um, for like tax season work. You, you'll see what I mean by that, is to do um, vendors and let's do, vendors and then let's do income statement and click on run report. So what, th what this will do is this will allow me to see if I have any vendors that have hit multiple expense accounts. So in this particular case, look, contractor has only done dues and subscriptions and vendor has on vendor two has only done commission and fees and vendor three has only done um, disposal fees and XY construction has only done um, uh, insurance. But if I were to create another expenditure, let's say I were to go to enter a bill and I'll do XY construction and I'll pick a different account I haven't used before. Make this 5,000. And I click on save and close. And I go back into this report. I'll be able to know that one specific vendor, it's hitting two of my expense categories. So that's huge because that would allow you to spot um, errors sometime. So in, a, in, a, in sort of a high level review, you wanna know if a vendor has hitting, been hitting multiple expense accounts, that's interesting. We can also try it the other way. We can do income statement and then do vendors and click on run report. And there it is. So before this report, the way I used to do this is with, um, with, uh, uh, with a pivot table. So I'm gonna show you exactly what I mean by that. So I'm gonna click on all my expenses by vendor. Actually, let's do, uh, let's go reports. And let's do transaction list by date. And I'm gonna go to customize, filters, and then only choose transaction type and select credit card expense and bill yeah that should be it. vendor credit would, would be to run report let's do all dates Just make sure they didn't miss anything check credit card expense bill oh an expense of course cash expense that weird thing over there run report ah where are you hold on a second no payment check, no payment credit card. That shouldn't matter anyway. Cash expense, sales receipt, or oh, expense. Jeez. Okay, there we go. So I, I selected all the transactions that are 
essentially expenses and they're grouped by vendor and, and by split. So I got my transaction grouped by vendor by split. So um, if I export this to Excel or to Google Sheets, whatever, I can use the same principle, pivot table principles, bring that into Google Sheets. inconvenience of security all right so let's go to Google Sheets here okay and the way this will work in a Google Sheet is I would do a pivot table same way as before and then I would pick under columns I would pick name and then on the second not columns what am I doing rows pick name and then under the second column, it would be account. Okay, not, not account, it would be split actually. Second column would be split. There we go. And then under values, it would be amount. So if I'm, I'm going through this real quick, I see that XY construction is hitting two expense categories. And the dollar value might be relevant or not. I'm not sure um, how that's gonna play out, but, um, but that's how it would work.